Hi everyone, welcome to part four of our Fiji tutorial videos. Today we're going to be covering a plugin that was not written in house, but which does uh, stitch together data sets that were collected in a tile format. And this plugin is called Grid Collection Stitching, and I've written the name down here for you. But before we get started, I just want to give one quick suggestion about how you should have your files formatted for this plugin. So one thing that's very important is that when you collect your data, and you might get any number of file formats out from the software natively, what you want to have before starting this tutorial is a folder full of images that all have the exact same file name with an iterator in position, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? This format is what you're gonna to need to run the plugin, and sometimes software from vendors doesn't necessarily spit out data in this format, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get it organized this way, before you start this tutorial. So I have some data sets that have tile positions all split out into um, a formatted array. And what we want to do is run this plugin to try to get them to stitch together. So I'm going to click on the Fiji toolbar, type L, which brings up my search window. And I'm going to search for grid slash collection. And as soon as you get the slash, it comes up. So I'm going to highlight that plugin here and click run. When I do that, I get a lot of options. I get a type, I get order, and I have a diagram displaying what the type and order mean. So you'll have to figure this out for your particular data set because every microscope and every company does this in a slightly different manner. So I know for the data set that we have today, our type is grid, which is snake by rows, and you'll see what that means in a second. So once I click that, it updates the diagram here. And it shows that snake by rows will go over, down, back, serpentine. And I know that the order is written down, even though there are, are lots of options. You can go about this grid from any direction. So for my data set, we need snake by rows and written down. You'll probably have to empirically determine or figure out from your microscope manufacturer which is the correct format for you. And I should note, um, and I put it down here in the text window, that this is based on a publication that you should reference if you use this plugin. So I'm going to click OK, and now we have to um, figure out our grid size and put in some things here. So in my data, I have my file format as this. Okay, so I just want to, and I and I have 12 images starting with number one. So I know that my grid size in X is four, so I'm gonna put in a four, and Y is three, and I'm gonna give it a 20% overlap, but you can adjust this as you need. My first file starts with a one, so that's what I'm gonna leave here in this um, option. If your indexes start with uh, zero, you'll wanna convert this to zero. We're gonna select our directory, and the easiest way to do it, rather than type, is to just copy directly from where it is and paste in there. That makes sure that you don't get any errors. So that's my directory. And I'm gonna do the same for the file name, general format. So I'm just gonna select the file name here, copy, paste here. I'm gonna put .tiff at the end. You have to have the file extension. So is it ND2 or an LSM or whatever your case may be. And then we need to tell it what part of this file name to iterate over to get all of the images. And we're gonna do that using curly braces and an I. So I'm gonna delete the number there, and I'm gonna put in open and close curly braces with a lowercase I. If you had two digits for yours, you'd put II, or four digits, you can scale up from there. We have some defaults here, which are all fine to leave for the type of blending and the configuration one of the things I always like to check is that compute overlap is selected, so this will actually calculate the overlap between images. And we're going to, um, you have two options here for computation parameters, save memory or save computation time. So I'm gonna make this go faster by using more RAM. And our output will be fuse and display. So I'm gonna click OK here. And at this point, if it can't find the files, you've made an error with your directory or your file name, you'll see that it says can't find file aborting. And in the end, you get your fused image out, which we can recolor to make it a little bit more friendly. I'm 
And I did Control Shift C there to bring up the brightness and contrast window, but it's also Image Adjust Brightness and Contrast. So here's my fluorescent signal for this uh, sample. And if I switch channels, this is my transmitted light. So I'll go ahead and switch that to gray. And then I can adjust parameters and make it make it pretty if I like. But this general um, procedure will stitch your data for you and get it into a format that you can display. Okay? So that works really well when you have transmitted light or something that overlays really well. So, um, but you can imagine that if you did not have the transmitted light that this might be a lot harder to stitch. And I want to show you a trick um, that works well for these types of data sets. So I'm just going to go ahead and close my image here, my dialogs, and my log window. And what I've done is made a new folder where I split out only the fluorescence channel into a new image set. I'm going to copy that directory now so that I have it. Okay. I'm going to go back to my command finder window and I'm going to click run again on grid collection stitching. It remembered all of my defaults before so this works quite nicely. I'm going to click OK. But now I have to update my directory which I know now has this folder split and I need to update my file name which is now also different so I'm going to copy that paste it here make sure to put dot tiff and again replace the number with curly braces and an I the rest of the settings will be the same and I'm going to compute overlap here and I want to see what happens to the output image so I'm going to click OK it's going to run through the process again quickly and in the end I get out an image control shift C to bring up brightness and contrast that is clearly not right compared to the image that I had before so in regions where there's not much signal there's nothing to overlay uh, there's nothing to compute the overlap and so it, it can um, misplace these tiles they're in this image window somewhere they're just laid somewhere they, where they shouldn't be so this is clearly not right so I'm going to close those windows We'll run grid collection stitching one more time. I'm going to use the same defaults that I did before, clicking OK. Same thing here, same files, same directory, but here now I do not want to compute overlap. So there are clearly tile positions which do not have enough information for me to stitch or to compute the overlap. So I'm going to deselect that option and leave everything else the same and click OK. And now this will run one final time. And in the end, I get out an image that is more representative of what my sample should be, okay? But it's still not perfectly stitched. If I zoom in here by clicking the zoom button and I left click in the image, I can look at regions where the tile where the tiles come together and I can see that they're not perfectly overlaid. But this gets me a pretty good estimate of what the data might be. And then from here, you'll have to play some other tricks to try to get your data fused together, okay? So this has been a tutorial on grid collection stitching in Fiji. Thank you very much for watching.